Okay, buckle up YouTube fam, because today we're taking a peek into the future. And let me tell you, it's looking very, very robotic and very, very Chinese. We're talking about humanoid robots, AI and sports competitions that are not just for show, but are actually pushing the boundaries of what these incredible machines can do. First off, let's talk about the big picture. China is absolutely dominating the robotics scene right now. We're talking about a robotics market that is already accounting for a whopping 40% of the global total. It is projected to grow to an insane 108 billion by 2028. You know, China is making things cheaper and it's also becoming an innovation hub, driving the next generation of robotics development. Now, you may be wondering, how are they doing it? Well, one of the most fascinating ways is through sports. And forget your traditional labs and sterile testing environments. China is using real-world sports competitions like marathons, boxing, and football as the ultimate proving ground for these AI-powered humanoids. It's like high-stakes, real-time stress for their algorithms and hardware software systems. You might have already seen some clips floating around and yeah, these robot footballers may look a little bit like teeny tiny tipsy seven-year-olds tumbling about the football pitch, but don't let that fool you. What happened in Beijing was a massive breakthrough. These humanoid robots dressed in their black and their purple jerseys played a 5-3 match controlled entirely by their built-in algorithms with zero human remote control. It wasn't about the lightning speed action. It was about demonstrating balance, agility, and air-powered decision-making. They could detect the ball from 18 meters away with 90% accuracy. They could identify the goal, the pitch, and even their opponents, making real-time decisions based on all that input. And get this, they're even designed to stand up on their own after falling. So let's be real, sometimes they still needed a little help getting up off the field on a stretcher, which honestly just adds to the realism, right? <laughs> and this Robot Football League was actually a preview for something even bigger. In the 2025 World Humanoid Robot Games happening in Beijing from August 15th to 17th, we're talking about 11 humanoid sports events, including gymnastics, track and field, and of course, football. Over 30 international teams have already pre-registered, bringing their cutting-edge algorithms to the table. But it's not just football. China has been pushing the envelope with other sports too. Back in April, Beijing hosted a humanoid half marathon, while only 6 out of the 21 robots finished the race. And some even had their heads roll off. It was a crucial step in testing their stability, autonomy, and efficiency in real world conditions. And then there was robot kickboxing. In May, Hangzhou saw a robot kickboxing tournament. Robotic limbs were flailing and robots keeled over. But then again, these events are all about pushing the technology forward. So, what's the secret sauce behind these increasingly agile robots? It's a type of AI called reinforcement learning. Think of it like this. The robots learn through trial and error, much like how we learn from our mistakes. They're trained in countless simulated situations to make real-time decisions. Whether it's passing, dribbling, shooting, or even predicting a teammate's movement, 
this is a huge leap from the older methods that required extensive human programming and didn't adapt well in new situations. Chung Hao, the CEO of Booster Robotics, the company supplying the robots for these events, perfectly summed it up when he said that the sports competitions are the ideal testing ground. They help accelerate the development of both the algorithms and the integrated hardware software systems. And a key point he emphasized is the safety. He envisions a future where robots and humans can play football together, not for winning, obviously, but for real offensive and defensive interactions, helping audiences build trust and understand that robots are safe. Well, it is entertaining. It's not just about the entertainment. It's about validating the technologies in real operating conditions and gathering extreme data that can't be obtained in civilian applications. It's about preparing these humanoids for real-world applications from factories and space stations to even assisting in emergency responses. China is clearly investing heavily in this field and these robot sports competitions are a brilliant way to showcase their advancements and inspire the next generation of innovators. It's a clear signal that China is not just a market leader, but a true innovation hub in the world of robotics. And honestly, who wouldn't want to watch a robot boxing match in the future, folks? And it's happening right now in China. China's robot sports are truly pushing the boundaries of what's possible, showing us a future where humans and machines can interact in incredible ways. Beto, beto, So if you found this glimpse into the future fascinating, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button for more. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Holy Christ. Holy Christ. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. Oh, you're still here? Awesome. That means that you're just as fascinated by the future of robotics as we are. And if you thought that robot sports were well, buckle up because I recently stumbled upon something even more mind-blowing. Beyond the football pitches and the boxing rings, it turns out that these incredible machines are taking on another crucial role in China. And that's police in the streets. We're talking about robots patrolling, monitoring, and potentially even enforcing law and order. It raises a whole new set of questions about privacy, safety, and the role of AI in our daily lives. It's a topic that's far too big to squeeze into this video, but if you're as intrigued as I am, and you want to see more, a full deep dive into China's robot police force, let me know in the comments below. Just comment Robocop down below, and if we get enough interest, I might just make that our next video.